don't even know why I'm actually nervous to sit down and film this video. I haven't done a self-care Sunday video in a hot, 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 hot minute. And um, if I'm being honest, I'm feeling really lost about content overall in general at the moment. It's just something I've been struggling with. I have a whole Q&A set that I know I need to reply to you on, which I will do in the course of this video. But before I dive into answering your questions, I feel like I want to first give you a little mental health update on where I've been. If you are new to this channel, you will not have a lot of context as to what I'm talking about. So I'm going to try to give context wherever possible. If you are someone who has been watching my vlogs and watching my videos on the regular, then you will have context to a lot of things. Uh, I'm Anam. I live my life as an open book on the internet. I love talking about beauty and fashion and vlogs but I also talk about my life very very openly. My vlogs are basically like a video journal <laughs> that I'm hoping I'll be able to look back at decades from now inshallah and um, I do YouTube to keep my heart happy if I'm being perfectly honest. My career and my job has been Instagram and blogs for so long and I of course I do monetize YouTube as well but this is something I do genuinely out of the love for the platform because nothing makes me feel the feeling of community the way this platform does. I'm being very honest about that. I um, I have been struggling with a lot of things recently, lately. In general, I think I wasn't in a great headspace over the last couple of months. And then of course, having my miscarriage in February only made it worse. I feel like I've, I'm in the process of healing from the trauma of having gone through that physical, emotional, mental. I feel like somebody said it the other day. One of my friend's mums said it the other day to me. They said, adversity shows you who the real ones are. And I, I really, really, I was like, yes, unfortunately, that is the way life is. And it's so funny because like, of course, you know, we always listen to our say that, you know, the people who are really there for you will be there for you in your lows will find a way to be there for you if that's what you know if that's what it comes to because everybody grieves differently everybody shows shares joy differently i wanted to dive back into work because i felt like it's what will keep me sane it's what will keep me in my happy place it's what will keep me um just going you know in in it. i don't want to get stuck i don't want a phase of my life to become how i define myself um, yeah, I'm taking a little bit more time to heal, which I think is normal. But at the same time, I'm trying to find that that balance for myself in different ways. I'll give you an example. I went to Udaipur. You guys may have seen the vlogs. And I had about 10-15 people in the course of those two days come up to me and congratulate me for my pregnancy. And I know I mentioned this in one of those vlogs for sure. And even apart from Udaipur, in person, people who haven't read the post... So context again for you is when I put up my miscarriage post, I got so much love and support that I think a few days later, I put up a thank you for your support post. And in that I held a sonography photo, which is the only photo I had of my little bean. And it was my way of saying thank you. But I think people didn't read the caption fully. So they thought that I was announcing my pregnancy with that post, which obviously was not the case. Literally at a in the middle of a party situation in Udaipur, when a few people came up to me, the first time I said it wasn't a pregnancy post, the second time I said it wasn't a pregnancy post, that time I just said thank you and I left it because I didn't have it in me to keep going over and over and telling people that I had a miscarriage, that this happened to me, and then they're like, how did it, na na na, and I just, I didn't, I didn't have it in me to go over the story time over and over again or just even just taking condolence after condolence I just I didn't so I tackled it in my own way wrong way right way god knows but I there's just a lot that I've been dealing with even after I came back I met someone the other day we were recording on a pod with someone and they were like oh my god how far along are you congratulations that how that's how they greeted me and I realized that okay people don't read captions it's a little bit triggering but I choose to put my life out there on the internet and so I must live with the consequences of it. And if somebody is not reading the caption, I obviously can't send them to jail for it. Um, but even beyond the personal front, on the work front, I've been dealing with so much. I had, I had uh, you know, an agency that used to represent me and a little over a month ago, um, I parted ways with them because I felt like 
I needed to kind of let go of that situation. I don't want to deep dive into details on that just to respect everyone's privacy. But it just in in a nutshell, it wasn't working out for me. And I felt like I have things, you know, manageable in-house, which is literally what's been happening over the course of the last month. So that's one of the things that I'm really happy about how they're going. Wait, is this foundation not working for me? Is there a lighting issue that I didn't realize there was? Because I can see some shadow on this side. One second, I'm sorry. Okay, it's slightly better now. In this video, I'm gonna try to really get my makeup to a glam moment, which is where I wanna be in my head. Today is also the first day of fashion week, so I'm gonna keep my makeup in theme with um, a little bit to match the outfit. And I'm feeling a little bit experimental these days, so I want to make sure that while we're talking deep, my glam still comes to an absolute 10. Um, I can see there's a little bit of a lighting issue on this side, so please work with me through this video and I promise to fix it for the next one. Also, I look naked like this, but I'm not. I'm just wearing an off-shoulder top, which you can't see clearly, so I'm going to pull this up a little bit. So it doesn't look weird. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot going on, even apart from like the personal front, there's so much happening on the work front. I've been happier about certain decisions and I've been struggling with a few other decisions. There's so much happening on the Verified front. Again, if you're new to this channel, then Verified is my made in India clean beauty brand. I work really hard on it. It's basically like I have two jobs now. I'm a full-time content creator and I'm a businesswoman where I have my own brand and I have a dedicated team for the brand. Um, where if I, it gives me a lot of joy, uh, it gives me just so much, I'm really proud of it as a brand. It, we're about a year and a few months, not even a year and a half old, and it just makes me happy to see it going from strength to strength. I do have a few new launches coming up, and I don't want to dive into them because I want this video to just be about you and me reconnecting, but yeah, you can go follow the Instagram page or the YouTube channel, I'll leave links down below. I want to tell you what I'm struggling with and I want to have a really really honest conversation about this because I don't think you and I have deep dived into this. Um, I will list all the products down below, don't worry. Using the Dior concealer, really great. I'll mention it when I can and I'll leave it mentioned linked below otherwise. What I'm really truly struggling with over the past couple of months if I'm being honest is where I am as a creator. I keep telling myself not to get caught up in the number game. I keep telling myself not to bother about things like follower subscriber growth and to focus on the followers I do have. But considering this is my full-time job, sometimes when these conversations come up in an agency setting um, or just in a general work setting, it can really take a toll on my mental health. And I am not going to pretend like it doesn't affect me, right? Because this is part of my job. Imagine you going into office because this is work for me also. Imagine you going into office and somebody constantly telling you, yeah, you're doing well, but so-and-so is performing better. And in the public eye, everyone can see everything. Like, there are times when I'll have a relative say, hey, why don't you get more likes? Look, this vlogger gets these many likes and I don't have answers to these things. I know I'm putting my heart and soul out there. I know I'm trying my best, but I, I'm not someone inherently who can just do things because they perform well if I don't resonate with that piece of content you know what I mean whether it's like I get told by a lot of people especially for like what I'm talking about is like let's say Instagram content I'll come to YouTube content as well I get told by a lot of people why don't you dance more you're such a good dancer the fact of the matter is is that dance content I love I even consume some of it but I don't know if I want to be an entertainment creator. You know what I mean? I want people to come to me for content that they can look up to me in. Like you guys come to me for beauty references. You guys come to me for beauty, um, you know, suggestions, product recommendations, even outfits sometimes. I think it's more beauty, but yeah, there's still a little bit of fashion in there, which is interesting because when I started my journey as a creator almost 12 years ago, it was more fashion oriented and beauty came later. Um, so I feel like, I feel like I would, if I would be doing that, I'd consider them as what we call filler posts. You know what I mean? Just something you put to make sure you have the engagement going and you have a post going like every day kind of a thing. 
but it's not something that I in the present see myself going into the niche of and I'm just trying to be really really honest with you over here um, is it something I'm saying I'll never do no because I do enjoy doing them every now and then like for example when I go for a dance class almost every time I go for a dance class I do make a reel and a shorts and put it up because I enjoy it and that time I'm truly resonating with that piece of content as something I've done and I'm sharing with my audience but I don't know if I can do anything just because it's trending or just because oh the algorithm will push this you know what I mean like I just feel like I need to feel something truly to be able to communicate that to you as my audience. Good for my audience that I'm so passionate about every piece of content that I put out but it's also not good for me as a creator because this is my business and I need to make sure that my growth is happening and I'm going to be very honest and tell you myself I've been stuck on 300, 12, 13, 11, 12, 13 something K on Instagram for the longest time and I have been upset about it I've gotten angry at myself about it I have gotten pissed off about it I've hated the algorithm for it I'm just being really really like this is the real deal on how I'm feeling about it um am I working hard on my content yeah I am but Am I keeping up with what's happening considering this whole trending angle and what the algorithm is pushing angle? No, I'm not. I'm not oblivious to it. Um, I remember somebody recently told me that maybe you should do more of that. You know, like I love to do the recreate makeup series, the recreate series on Instagram or the Halloween SFX type of makeup or like stuff like that. And I keep saying I like to do that again when I feel like it. Having said that, that's not stuff that's going to be useful to my audience. You're not really going to recreate a Halloween makeup look and maybe you will once a year. But that's not useful to anybody. I get that the entire Instagram trend and wave is going in the direction and I'm speaking so candidly over here. There's so much that could get me in trouble potentially, I'll be honest. Um, I get that the whole trend and wave is going in the direction of like things that just entertain and not necessarily useful. While of course is a very big audience for useful also because I'm seeing the saves and shares on my useful beauty hacks, tips and tricks, while reels and stuff like that. I'm seeing the analytics on that. But at the same time, the entertainment and trending and this and that is a much bigger audience. And I've been having this push and pull internally, whether it's with myself, my team, Jerry, well-wishers. I've had a couple of data people look into my feed over the last few months, uh, twice in the last six, seven months, if I'm being very accurate on that. And um, they've all said to me that content that's doing well in general on platforms has to do more with entertainment than with usefulness and if I want to see growth I'm gonna to have to take useful content and mix it in with the entertaining content rather than the way I choose for it to be which is the other way around and it's something I'm really struggling with anyway post the pandemic I've been thinking that you know like especially during the pandemic and after for quite some time I've struggled with the idea that what is my job what am I doing am I even helping people like there's people doing real serious jobs out there and I'm sitting here playing with makeup. And yeah, maybe we distract people or entertain people and people that are in the space for makeup who are helping them, sure. Um, but it just started to feel very like I started having like this. I'm sure so many others did, so I'm not saying it's only me. But there was almost like this existential crisis that I started feeling for quite a while. Um, and then when you put your heart and soul into your career that you had for, you know, 11 and 11 years and something months at this point, it just starts to feel like, what am I even doing? It's not like, again, I'm making it sound a lot worse than it is. I want to be like, I want to self-assess really quickly and say that because it's not like it's going bad, but it's not as good as it potentially could be or as if I could just cut out the emotional side that I have for my content and just look at, hey, this is performing well, do more of this. You know what I mean? Um, I feel like then I might be more content with content from a numbers point of view. But 
it's just this ongoing struggle if i'm being perfectly honest living a life in the public eye where people look and compare numbers one to another it can feel like a lot of pressure um i do think that having any job is tough it doesn't matter what job you have um when it comes to the idea of being having a regular 9 to 5 job it has its own pressures it has its own pros cons and being a creator has its own pressures and has its own pros and cons i feel like as a creator personally because naturally this is my lived experience i can only speak from here uh there's no switching off i remember when jerry and i had gone to turkey this is about 3 4 years ago actually now um i said oh my god this is a holiday we're not gonna i'm not going to like create create content over here it's just going to be a chill holiday for him and i because we had not gone on a honeymoon after getting married gerard and i got married in jan 2017 and this turkey trip happened in march 2019 and we had not gone for a honeymoon because i said instead of going on a honeymoon we'll put that money aside towards putting a down payment on the house and because i really wanted to buy my own house and um after we put the down payment down and we got the house etc etc is when we went to turkey and uh, I landed up completely making content on that trip. You just, I think, wiring a change हो जाता है after being a content creator for a while. I mean, even non-creators when they go on holidays, they take so many photos, videos, reels. I've seen how my friends also travel now. Social media has changed the way all of us create content and share on you know online. But I worked through that trip pretty much. I vlogged from all the cities. I landed up getting a campaign where I had to shoot pictures for a brand whose ingredients were made, uh, whose products were made from ingredients in Turkey. So I had done a whole host of product shots for them while we were traveling and on the move. I am not complaining about it. Please don't get me wrong. This is not me complaining. This is just me trying to give my point of view that there are everybody has their own pressures and everyone has their own struggles, and. I've dealt with mine for as long as I have, but I think over the last few weeks, I'm struggling to deal with it. If I'm being perfectly honest, because I can feel myself being on the verge of saying, "Okay, fuck it, let's not be emotional. Let's just do what the algorithm is telling me to do." And I don't want to become that person. I'm really resisting becoming that person. It will be better for my career. I sleep better now. and i'm so scared about switching over and doing content that's just gonna i don't even know if i'm explaining it properly to be honest am i even explaining it properly should i had somebody sitting here with me to help me frame sentences it almost feels like that i'm just trying to say there's a lot going on in my mind right and because instagram is the bread and butter in my life for as long as it has been it feels a little intimidating to do well but not well enough because of these pressures As far as YouTube is concerned, I feel like I should talk about that because YouTube has become my happy place of sorts really over a period of time. Um, my God, I really have let this concealer sit and sit and sit. I need to blend really quickly. Give me one second. I needed some instant blending to happen, and now I need some instant fixing to happen. We were talking about YouTube, yeah. So the thing with YouTube is that YouTube truly has become my happy place of sorts on the internet over the last couple of years. Um do I make money in general from YouTube? Yes. Do I make enough money to pay my bills? I will be very honest and say no. What keeps me here is that sense of community that you guys have built with me. What keeps me here is love for the platform, is my love for long form content where I can just sit and talk to you. and if you relate you'll tell me there's a lot more you know just genuine interactions coming from the comments coming from running into you guys across the city or in different cities i remember a time when my blog you like people used to stop me and say i love your blog i love your blog and then when i kind of stopped blogging cuz people weren't reading like website long form content as much everything kind of shifted to instagram and then i started youtube properly in 2017 it'll be 6 years in uh, march aprilish like it's march now today is march 9th as i film this i think it was around march or april that i decided that i was going to be regular on youtube in 2017 just after getting married um and i remember suddenly people i was bumping into were telling me we love your vlogs we love your youtube we love your videos 
and that means so much to me because I've always been someone who likes the details, who likes to talk, who likes to be able to share. Um, I get asked so often, I was on somebody else's podcast and they asked me that, where do you draw the line about being candid? And I'm like, I can't think of a single thing I wouldn't share. I mean, I went to the extent in one of my recent blogs telling you guys that I sent the remnants that they found inside my uterus um, from the DNC for genetic testing. So I really do deep dive into pretty much everything, right? I mean, I, I the only thing I can think I'm leaving out of here is talking about my sex life, which obviously is I would never talk about on the internet because it's private and I don't think anybody's interested in that kind of conversation. I'm also very proud of the kind of community we have here for that matter because I feel like I have a very decent audience. I feel like I have a very evolved audience. I don't think I have too many like random people on the internet and I don't mean that as a derogative statement. I mean that as you are exactly my TG. You know, most of you are women. Most of you are my around my age. Um, I feel like we connect on a very mental, emotional level. You take my product recommendations or travel recommendations into consideration. That's great. But the hero of the scenario for me is that I connect with you. And I can see that when I see your DMs, when I see your comments. It makes me, it makes me feel like... Even if there aren't so many views as I would ideally like because I'm putting in the work and putting in so much production, this, that, etc. I can still live with it because it's worth it. It's worth it because I get to make these these connections with you guys. Um, that means the world to me, to be honest. Uh, should I get into the Q&A that you guys said? I feel like I just let like off a big load about how I'm feeling about work right now. And I feel like when I let go of so many of my thoughts, you guys have a better understanding of where I am, just in general, personally, emotionally, mentally, even work-wise. So I put up this post on my community page last night, and I'm going to go in very random order. We also got quite a few questions on Instagram, so I'm just going to figure what I can do, how many I can do, where I can dive into. Nishta Malhotra asks me, what gives you strength and what makes you weak? Happy Women's Day. Happy Women's Day. Yesterday was Women's Day. What gives me strength in my real life? I feel like my family is my biggest strength. My husband, obviously, is part of my family. Um, my family gives me the biggest strength. Like, I say so often, I am everything I am because of my mom. Because she raised me a certain way. Because she instilled certain values in me. I feel like she has been through so much in life. And she still is so loving, has so much love to give. She's one of the most forgiving souls in the world. Sometimes I don't like that she's so forgiving, but she is. What to do? Um, she is just one of the most nice, kind-hearted, gentle hearts ever. Uh, my dad is, you know, I mean, I knew whoever I would land up marrying would have a very high standard to match up to because my dad is one of the just the nicest human beings walking on the surface of this planet he is again one of the most kind generous people and i say this without bias i know they're my parents but i would be saying the exact same thing even if they weren't my parents and god they're my parents uh, but they have they never saw a difference between me and my brother they always let me be i always had such an open relationship with them I feel like I owe everything I am to my parents. If it wasn't for the way they raised me, the ambitions they gave me, the drive they helped me, you know, they encouraged me to have. I feel like, yeah, my brother even so encouraging. He's always there for me. He's so caring. He is, you know, my Bhabi and him have stood by me like a rock. Like rocks? Like a rock? But they're two people. So like rocks? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my husband, I have the most loving, kind, feminist husband in the world who, you know, is just everything and some more that I could ask for, if I'm being very honest. So there's, they're, they're all my strength. They're all my strength. Even the kids, for that matter, Rayan and Ramaisa, my brother and Bhabi's kids, I have, a, again, if you're new to this channel, I have a 10-year-old nephew and a 6-year-old niece. And, um, again, just the nicest kids that I have ever met. 
most well mannered most kind most loving and to me my family is everything i'm i always have been a very very blending foundation where i noticed it was in completely blended um i've always been a very very family first person i feel like when you put your fam in my scenario i would like to say because i know every family is different in my scenario i put my family first and i know my family puts me first and that means the world to me you know what i mean what makes me weak <laughs> i think i don't know what makes me weak but i think that things that make you strong and the fear of losing that strength also makes you weak so i love my family a lot and the fear of losing any one element in my family makes me very very weak i don't know if that answers the question correctly but it is how i feel I would love to know about all the legalities that are to be maintained when starting a business you know it's very dangerous to ask me this question because i'm very technical and i go into multiple legalities but i don't want to answer this question because i am not qualified to so if you um, are looking to start a business i'm going to recommend you get a lawyer because things that i may have had to do as a beauty business owner may not be the same and uh, this is not my niche i can't sit here giving you legal advice because i am not a lawyer so would highly recommend you get an actual lawyer to guide you through this um sorry but i can't answer this question it doesn't make sense i'm really sorry pratyusha asks me hope you're doing well there are times when one can feel anxious and low out of the blue and we're unable to explain a particular reason behind it it just hits hard and it gets difficult to cope for days sometimes what do you do in such instances lots of love if i'm going to be perfectly honest when i feel like this i go to therapy i've been going to therapy on and off for the last 5 6 years and i find it really really helpful because and i like to go to therapy when i'm feeling really low plus when i'm feeling really happy if i'm being very very honest about it because i feel like to manage your emotions properly and completely you need to have a holistic venting session on both ends and not just you know on one side um i feel like a lot of people have inhibitions about going to therapy or are just you know not they don't consider it for whatever reason i'm very very pro therapy i'm very very much of the belief that sometimes um venting to your friends and family is great i'm not saying you shouldn't but i also feel like in this day and age when everyone has so much of their own shit going on a it's really important to ask someone before venting and you know kind of saying hey are you in the frame of mind to take some of my weight off my chest and b i feel like no matter who in your personal life you're venting to there will always be some sort of bias that could potentially kick in right so let's let me give you a silly little example let's say jerry and i are having a fight and i go to my best friend and say you know i said this jerry said this this that a she's only getting my side of the story so it's not a comprehensive two sided you know narration that she is getting so she is obviously going to think i'm right because everybody always thinks they're right that's human nature um and b um then she's probably going to see jerry in a different light you know the next time she meets him like she's going to be like he did so and so and so it but that's not fair i don't want anybody to see jerry in a different light because him and i could have had a silly argument that i went to my best friend about but that shouldn't change the way she perceives him So I feel like having a neutral person who is not connected to your real life. Like for example, my therapist doesn't even follow me on Instagram. I know because I checked and I almost went to follow her and then I realized wait, she doesn't follow me because we've had that conversation. Um so I feel like it's nice to have that neutral party who will hear what you have to say without any bias. Ke hi mera bachcha or hi meri best friend or you know something like that. So it just it's what keeps me going in general if it's not too serious and i'm feeling a random low out of the blue day again this is my lived experience i'm acknowledging my privilege right here i can take the liberty of saying okay i'm going to take 2 hours off i need to just be i need to just soak like i'm one of those people who when i'm going through something low in my life whether it's what i recently went through or whether it's something i went through many years ago i've always been the kind of person who would say okay i'm going to sit i'm going to cry or i'm going to journal or i'm going to let myself just feel miserable for let's say half an hour and then i'm going to get back to my day and then if i need another half an hour at night before going to bed i'll give myself that half an hour i'm that person who can compartmentalize uh, i'm great at compartmentalizing and it's worked for me so far in my life you know what i mean i feel like different things work for different people 
I'm 31 years old, so I also feel like you become more sure of what works for you and what doesn't work for you as we age. The one constant thing I would 100% tell everyone is to know who truly has good intentions for you in life. So when you need to go and vent to a friend in case your therapist is busy or you don't go to therapy and you just want to stick to somebody from your personal life for your own reasons, um, just it's... It, it can be very tricky taking advice from people because you unfortunately in life don't know who really has the best intentions for you and who doesn't. So always keep that filter on, unfortunately or fortunately, especially if it's somebody new. If it's someone who's been in your life for a long time, I mean some kind of filter should always stay on if I'm being perfectly honest because especially with my own recent experiences, I would say oh, it's better to be careful than to be gullible and you know kind of think people have the best no people don't always have the best interest for you i used to be naive enough to think dusro ke liye acha karoge to sab hamare liye bhi acha karenge but unfortunately life has taught me otherwise and um, today i'm more informed about what really truly is in my favor versus what is not so i just want to put that out there um you guys leave comments saying things like i give you elder sister vibes this elder sister is all about the tough love and brutal honesty so i hope you don't mind that um i'm gonna be just really really real with you sandra k says hey anam i have been watching your vlogs regularly since last year and it's really really good to watch you talk run your errands and do your admin stuff it's really therapeutic so one thing I would like to suggest to you is please, please do continue do continue doing what you're doing. I did comment an essay on your old videos hoping to get your attention, but my bad not yet happened. Guys, use the hashtag wherefam in your comments. That is literally how I choose my wherefam comment shoutouts. So my question is, what would 18-year-old Anam say to the current Anam if they meet? Let's time travel, she says. This is a great question. I think she would be proud of me. I think she would say, Dekha, bola tha. <laughs> now you know <laughs> i think 18 year old anam and i why is this not opening i have a verified sample over here this is not going to be the packaging for my bronzer it's just a sample sitting over here you guys have seen this before which is why i'm like throwing it around so nonchalantly sample hai final final formula ka i think 18 year old anam and i is still very similar at the core but we're still very different because I've definitely grown and evolved and learned lessons in the last 13 years since being 18. I'm 31 years old today. So I definitely, definitely feel like there's been so much that I've learned. And at the same time, there's an element of me that is still so me. And I'm glad that it is because while you grow, you should not grow into a different person. You should evolve on who you are. Um, so yeah i think for me that's what 18 year old anam would say to me i'm using the contour by the way not the bronzer we have a contour shade and a bronzer shade coming up mohini says you are a great fighter be yourself we have so much respect to your pain comes and goes but you should stay strong but i think you will be fine and come again like a fighter lots of love from bhutan thank you thank you thank you Itiza says, first of all, I'm a big fan of yours and just loving your content. My question to you is, how do you manage to overcome from your difficult period? My cousin had a miscarriage last week and she's very depressed about it. Share some tips only if you're okay talking about this. Thank you and I hope you will take my question. Unfortunately, I don't really have a specific answer to this. I gave myself that time to sit and cry and wallow and journal and you know, practice a few general therapy-based exercises that have worked for me. I am yet to go into therapy um, to discuss this. I just don't want to deep dive into it at the moment. I will go, I'm telling myself I go post Fashion Week. Today is the first day of Fashion Week. Um, but I know I will go because I usually take time to process things and then go in and discuss them. I'm not a very knee-jerk reaction kind of person. I need to just take my time to process things and then, you know, I'm, I'm, I am fully that person. I feel like I'm not equipped to answer this question because I myself am not fully healed. My way of dealing with the situation has been to try and get back to work, to connect with you guys, to resume working on my campaigns, product development. So I don't know if I'm fully equipped to answer this question yet, if I'm being honest, because it's not like I've healed. For me, it's been only three, three and a half weeks. I'm just, I'm trying. I'm trying with each day. 
the fact that I'm not crying right now is plus one me to myself. I can tell you that. When will you start shipping internationally? I want to get my hands on verified perfumes. You know the amount of paperwork that goes into shipping internationally and the amount of investment that comes with those licenses and this and that is really, really, really a process. So I don't have a concrete answer for you, unfortunately. Please touch on a topic as to how to stick to organization for a long time despite so many problems thrown at us from all sides. How to take care of mental health. Yeah, my answer is going to be similar to these Get your life together by organizing, by journaling, by giving yourself some me time every day. Me time can be in the form of sitting and staring into space. Me time can be in the form of meditation. Me time can be in the form of a workout. Me time can be in the form of journaling. Um, going to therapy, zoning out in whatever way works for you. I do different things for myself, but for me, the constants in my me time that help me cope have to be things like journaling, therapy, meditation, um, affirmations. These are the things that help me, and I've been doing these for as long as I can remember, if I'm being honest. I know they've become more mainstream. I say it with air quotes. I know it's become more mainstream to talk about these things now. So I don't want to sound like a life coach because I'm not. But I do think that if you are truly finding it difficult to get your shit together, consider going to a life coach. There's a whole set of people out there that can truly help you bring your life together how to make new friends in mid 20s and how to make new friends if you are not an influencer especially the second part of this question has thrown me off a little bit i don't know how to answer this well my way of making friends in my 20s had to do with meeting people at events or agencies because that's what i was surrounded by obviously if you're not an influencer look around at the job you have and try to find people in that zone I feel like common interests are a great way of making friends. I've made a few friends by going to dance class regularly, which is great because I also feel like I wish I, I mean, I wish it was easier to make friends. I feel like common interests, I feel like just via friends, I feel like putting yourself out there in the friend world is as important as putting yourself out there as single people do in the dating world. Um, people are not going to randomly walk up to you and be friendly with you if you are someone that, you know, that is not also reciprocating that energy. I feel like that's really important to kind of take that initiative when you can or at least reciprocate it when you can. Why is this plush not doing anything for me? So these things, I'm literally making an effort not to reach for the verified blush today because I feel like I reach for it so much. I've hit pan and pan and pan so many times at this point. I'm even including the samples, of course, when I say that. I'm literally making an effort to use non-verified products where I can. I will be linking and listing all the products down below. I feel like it's important to make that effort. There's no shortcut to this, but I feel like simple things could also, what could also very much help is reconnecting with old friends, if that is an option. One of the things that works well is, yeah, I already said via friends or common interests things like dance class for me work yeah unfortunately those are the only answers I have I used to be so 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 social back in the day um and I mean back in the day in the sense yeah even in my 20s I guess I'm talking about because I would have like a school friends then I would have a smaller group of school friends then I would have tuition friends I would have you know nearby my house friends not necessarily building friends because there weren't very many but like around the area friends then I would have college friends and I would have my best friend who was in the same school as me she was in the same college but she was in a different course so then there would be her college friends and there would be a mixed group friends and then when i met jerry there was jerry's friends like then i i spent a few summers in hong kong so then i have a hong kong friend circle then when i go to the us my family friends there so that i feel like i have always i used to be a very very social person somehow that has changed over the years and i've become more about valuing my tighter circle of friendships more there is a lot of instances that I can point to and say I've been let down here, here and here. There's definitely going to be instances where the people can also point back at me and say they've been let down here, here and here. But that's just how life goes on both fronts, I guess. So I feel like effort, reciprocation, honest energy and communication without anybody attacking anybody is really important. My contour is uneven, so I need to fix that. I feel like just, yeah, these bunch of things that my mind goes to when you talk about friendships in 20s and now I'm 31 I will be 32 inshallah in June on June 17th so in my 30s 
Okay, sweetie, wishing you good health and speedy recovery. If you have to keep only three perfumes, what would they be? Aisha is asking me this question. Only three perfumes? That would be very difficult. So obviously I would keep my verified perfumes. I'm just not going to count those. Or should I, can I count at least like that as one? I mean, I love all my five fragrances. But okay, so let's just count the verified ones as one. But they are, they smell like luxury. But she said luxury in the sense, I'm assuming you mean like price-wise luxury then? Okay, so let's not count the verified ones because even though we smell like luxury, we're only 1700 rupees, 1699 if I'm being apt. Or 599 if you want the minis, three minis in one. That's me plugging in verified fragrances for you. Okay, seriously, if I'm answering this question, Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. I know I kept that for my wedding day and wedding night. Um, it was new at the time. Um, Twilly Dear Mans from Hermes. Just something that's an absolute, absolute classic is team yeah okay because even though it's for men i love that one. Oh, three ho gaya okay three ho gaya done i was gonna keep going on but daisy by mark jacobs another one of my favorite okay i should stop you said three so i answered three do you guys just do verified or does jerry do something else too no jerry just works on verified which is a full-time job you guys it's not time pass it's not some hobby it takes a lot 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 of time and effort um, making sure our customer support is on point, making sure our, you know, packages reach you on time, your orders reach you on time. Jerry looks into all of that. It is a uh, very, very time consuming job. I wanted to use a new blush, but this label sticker thing is going to come in my way. One second. So yeah, every time you get your package on time, every time you get your package in a good condition, which is 99% of the times, alhamdulillah, or even when you don't, Jerry takes care of everything with our logistics team. Jerry does QCs himself 99% of the times. He is the person that makes sure everything once, like basically, the, I'll tell you how the responsibilities are split. I look into, uh, like I have somebody dedicated for social media and for the marketing aspect. So I look into those verticals. I don't execute those verticals, uh, but th those are like my department, let's say. I also look into product development, dealing with vendors. Those are the kind of things I choose to do. Even when it comes to product development, uh, dealing with vendors, those are the things that I take care of because naturally, Jerry will not know what a product should perform like or feel like and ap apply like and those kind of things. When it comes, once the products are ready, etc. and they come in, website and all of that, I have like, if I take care of all of that because I've learned coding back in the day in my college time and school time. But we also have an agency set up that works on the back end of the technicalities. Apart from that, getting the products out to you. The minute everything's ready, uh, inventory, warehouse, stocking, QCs, customer support, um, shipping logistics. That's all Jerry's department. So him and he has a, like a set of people dedicated under him. Uh, look into all of that. I do not get involved in that because of course I also have my job as a content creator. If I was doing only verified me, then I would probably be involved in that as well because I'm interested in all aspects of the business. I did grow up having both my parents in business. Uh, both my parents have been have had their own fashion businesses and um, I feel like business is something that does run in the family in that sense like we all have a an understanding of how to run it and I can always go to my parents for advice which is very very I mean something I'm very very grateful for um, even my brother has his own business my brother is in real estate he has been in real estate for buying leasing selling both residential and commercial properties in Mumbai since 2000 and I want to say 11, 10 or 11, no 11, 11, it was the same year I had started my blog I think and um, I can go ahead and leave his email ID down below so if anybody over here is looking for a house in Mumbai you know where to go to, um, he's the person who helped me find my beautiful house as well, uh, a year and a half of hunting because I had a very specific checklist um, and he made sure that it ticked all the boxes so I feel like because I've had a family that has been very business savvy and business strong in that sense, um, I can always go to them for advice. That has been obviously an advantage that I'd like to acknowledge. Um, I want to have some water. Where's my water bottle gone? Wow, this is going to be a long video, huh? I'm talking to you very Shweta is asking, you'll be bussing Anam, okay? I don't know what that means. Manifesting more numbers on our YouTube fam. <gasps> 
thank you especially if you watch the first half of this video thank you <laughs> um i want to know one mindset or belief that has been constant with you be it at 18 20 25 and now i've always believed that if you put your heart and soul into something you will reap the rewards like i feel you shouldn't do it for the rewards when it comes to personal things but like if i'm giving a professional um piece of advice to you then yeah, it would just be that if you're sure of what you're doing, you do your research, put your hard work, mind, soul, energy, good thoughts to it. You know, like everyone talks about manifesting and stuff and I do believe in the power of manifestation in general, but without hard work, manifesting is just daydreaming. You have to be able to put in the amount of work to back that up. It's great to have a vision on where you want to go, but just the vision is not enough. You have to be able to bring yourself to live a life that will get to that vision. So, if you don't do it, how will you get to that It's just the way, you know, it's just something that, there's something to think about, I guess. That's something that has been a constant. What's the best way for a small business to grow feeling lost? It also depends on what the industry is. So again, I don't know if I have the right, right answer to you. So naturally, my answer, I'm trying to open this palette. Uh, my answer is going to be from the lens of, say, Verify, right? What's worked for us has been really focusing on product quality. Um, if you notice the way we operate, I look at really good packaging, but I don't spend too much on good packaging i feel like there are a lot of in general i say this across industries and okay specifically for the beauty industry also there are so many brands out there that spend so much on packaging it makes it look makes the product look bomb but at the same time the product itself may not be at that level there are also because now i'm on this side of things I feel like having done my research, I also realized <clears throat> that this product could have been a lot lesser if the product packaging wasn't like the product may be great, but you have to sell it at three times the MRP because you've spent so much on packaging. So it has a lot to do with who you're looking to sell to. Some people want that beautiful product to sit on their vanity and they are the right TG target group for your product or service, just your brand in general, let's say. And then in certain cases, like for me, I make sure I spend... I don't hold back on spending on my product, on the performance of the product, the way the lipstick glides, the way the brush holds, the hair quality. I'll actually spend on the product and then I'll spend on the packaging as well. But I won't spend so much on the packaging that my MRP has to shoot up considerably because of the, um, you know, the, the packaging alone. Because I want people to be able to enjoy the actual performance. Um, I'm actually going to be able to tell you more about this in one of our launches, which should be a summer launch. Literally, as of yesterday, we chose to go with a different packaging option only because it was making our cost much, much lesser because I would have had to charge you as the customer more if I was spending on the more luxurious. So there was a really nice option and there was a really, really nice option. Let me put it like that. And as much as we wanted to go for the really, really nice option when we did the cost working of it, it would have, there would have been at least a 50% increase, at least in MRP, in sales and selling price to you um, for the packaging being nice. And the product was the same, na? So I didn't want a 50% jump in price. So we went with the really nice option, which is still like genuinely really nice. I'm not just saying it for shits. But at the same time, your product, your performance, your quality, etc. is the same. And yeah, okay, I had to, I couldn't go with, I'll be able to tell you and show you probably both options at the time of launching this product. So I think it depends on what you're looking for. Performance marketing is something that every brand should look at if they're in the product or service business. Um, in the non-luxury space, probably, I don't know how it'll work if you're an extreme luxury brand. I feel like having a good communication with your audience through social media presence is very, very important. It's become the need of the hour, especially now because every brand and product is looked up on social media and looked up for reviews, etc. So that's again something that's that's really, really important. I was uh, expecting more just life personal questions, so I'm actually happy to see a mix in of work over here. Hey Anna, no questions. Just want to send you all the love and happiness in this world. Thank you, Humera. Thank you so much. Rashmika is asking if I had any side effects to folic acid. Since I mentioned I started having folic acid way before. So I conceived in January. 
I started having folic acid in around, I want to say November or December, one of the two. I think maybe it was December. I started having it because of course we were planning for a baby. And no, I didn't have any side effects. Um, in fact, I didn't even have any nausea while I was pregnant. So yeah, no, just gonna answer your question right there. Roshni is asking if there's going to be any videos of the podcast in present day. I think we have about three episodes out. There'll probably be around four or five by the time this video goes live because I am um, gonna put this up on a Sunday I think mostly since it's a self-care Sunday video. I don't think we're going to be doing full episodes on YouTube per se. You will see some snippets on my shorts etc. Uh, but for full episodes, I will need you guys to please go over, follow, subscribe on whatever audio streaming platform you prefer. Whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify or anything else that you have and that you listen to your podcasts on, you will find everything in full episodes there. We will be making exceptions for certain episodes. Um, for example, in present day, next week, we are going to be filming an episode with Jerry. I do want that to come on YouTube as well. So that episode, there will probably be a full YouTube version of. But in general, when I talk to all our other guests, no, we are very much only keeping audio first. Because I feel you guys get enough video content from me in the form of vlogs and all that. So I didn't want to populate the feed just for the heck of it. I would rather you guys listen to your podcasts while multitasking, while driving, while going to work, while, you know, commuting in any form. I feel like that's the strategy we're going in with as of right now. Of course, if it changes, you guys will see on the channel. If it changes, I will announce. But as of right now, that's the plan. Uh, I've completed my eye makeup look off camera. I stopped because the azan was going on. And uh, just one thing led to another so i'm just really quickly gonna go do my mascara add some verified false lashes and come back in a second to the end of today's self-care sunday video i have a swatch party going on on my hand i need to go clean up but this is what the final look is like i am hoping that this will stay as is all the way into the night because it's only 1 55 pm right now and my fashion week show that i and my battery died <laughs> We come to the end of this video is what I was saying. I have my fashion week show tonight. I'm hoping that the makeup lasts nice and good all the way into the night. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these self-care Sunday videos because I know that this is a series that you guys have loved so much in the past. The secret code for today's video is blue eyes, hypnotize. So if you've made it till the end of this video, leave it down in the comments and I'll know how many of you made it all the way through this very long and very chatty video. The where fam comment shout out for today goes to all of you because you have just been fantastic, supportive, encouraging, loving, and I couldn't have asked for more. Thank you for allowing me to bear my soul, to be honest, to be transparent, because I don't think I would have been able to be this transparent if I didn't get the same kind of energy and reciprocation from you. Um, this is not a one-sided street. I love you very, very much. And I feel that warm energy, that loving energy, that protective energy almost from you guys. Um, and I'll never take that for granted. That I can promise you. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for being absolutely amazing. Bye, guys.